Chris, that's Swiss Air 127. He had a UFO or a rocket, something almost hit him in my airspace. Military radar advises they are picking up an intermittent primary target behind you in trail. Since the earliest years of man flight, pilots and astronauts from around the world have encountered UFOs high in our skies and beyond. This is Houston. Say again, seven. Now, many of their dramatic cockpit recordings, film clips, and stories have been made available for the first time. The UFO? Oh, it's the Roswell crap again. UFO reports that we get from professional pilots are considered among the very best because of their knowledge of the sky. From never-before-released black box and control tower recordings, from commercial airline flights. Fast you, Julie, you still see uh, traffic out there? Hell yeah. For the FAA, UFOs are real. They've been punishing pilots and covering up UFO reports for over 50 years. To never-before-seen astronaut reports and secret recordings in outer space, as recently as 2005. So we have an unidentified flying object. Many of NASA's top astronauts have already testified to seeing UFOs. As astronauts and pilots around the world report an ever-increasing level of unusual activity in our skies, Many wonder, do the skies belong to us or to them? The report that was made last November 17th of a UFO spotted over Alaska attracted special attention. This sighting was made by an airline pilot with 29 years of experience. The crew claims that while it was flying over Alaska last November, it was followed for 400 miles by strange white, yellow, and amber lights. Of the thousands of reported pilot and astronaut encounters with UFOs around the world, Few are more harrowing than the encounter on November 17, 1986, by Japanese Airlines Flight 1628, high above the remote Alaskan tundra. Regarding uh, uh, airline cases uh, in, uh, in America, the GL is very interesting because you have multiple witnesses. It was a cargo aircraft, and the pilots uh, observed an object that seemed to be tracking along with their aircraft. It involved an investigation by the FAA. This is an official government investigation. Uh, the sighting itself. The events of that night were captured on tape. Spinner 1628 heavy. Military radar advises they are picking up intermittent primary target behind you. In trail. In trail, I say again. The Boeing 747 cargo jet is on a routine flight from Paris to Tokyo, cruising at 600 miles per hour at an altitude of 35,000 feet. It heads towards Anchorage, Alaska to refuel. Suddenly, at 5.11 p.m., Captain Kenju Terauchi, a pilot with 29 years flight experience, sees three large, fast-moving, unidentified objects 2,000 feet below them. The largest object is described by Captain Terauchi as resembling, quote, a shelled walnut. Captain Terauchi describes the main craft as being twice the size of an American aircraft carrier. Co-pilot said it was as solid there as if you were seeing an oncoming jet with its lights on, except it wasn't an oncoming jet. 747 was nothing compared to this uh, big flying saucer. After several minutes of observing the UFO, the pilots realize the objects are now matching their speed, 600 miles per hour, tracking them. The captain reports that the objects begin, quote, making moves that are impossible for any man-made aircraft to perform. Then, without warning, two of the smaller craft suddenly rise and shoot directly in front of the pilot's window. The objects come so close to the airplane that Captain Terauchi says the intense glow makes his face feel warm. All of a sudden they appear and they're traveling right in front of the aircraft. And they were sort of wobbling back and forth as they moved. They seem to be only a, a thousand, maybe two thousand feet in front of the aircraft and traveling at six hundred and some miles an hour. At that very moment, the radio link to Anchorage goes dead, leaving the aircraft flying blind. A horrifying catastrophe is seconds away, but the UFOs rise and veer left.
formation. In his official FAA report, Captain Terauchi says, quote, we had to get away from that object. Defender 1628, sir, do you still have the traffic? Uh, disappear, Defender 1628. Defender 1628, I understand you do not see the traffic any longer. I'm dead. Moments later, an urgent message comes in from Elmendorf Air Force Base. The unidentified object now appears on their radar. Yeah, there's one that's two again. We have confirmed there's a flight size of two around your 1550 squad. One primary return only. Okay, where is he following him? It looks like he is, yes. Okay, stand by. The phrase flight size of two indicates that JAL 1628 has uninvited guests with possible hostile intentions. Defender 1628 heavy military radar advises they are picking up an intermittent primary target behind you. In trail, in trail, I say again. Immediately after this confirmation, the FAA requests that the Air Force scramble jets. Do you have anybody to scramble up there, or do you want to do that? Oh, we're going to talk to your liaison officer about that. It's starting to concern of uh, Japan Airlines taking the 360 now, and it's still falling. Okay, we're going to we'll call the military desk on this. Although the military desk took no action, JL-1628 was able to land safely in Anchorage at 6.20 p.m. Extensive media coverage from around the world helped make this incident one of the most widely reported UFO cases in history. While the JAL case continues to inspire debate about the nature and intent of the objects that tracked the 747, to this day, the case remains a mystery. The Japan Airlines 747 had a saucer go around it. The papers mysteriously disappeared from the FAA office. January 30, 1987, only two months after the JAL report, a similar UFO event takes place in these same Alaskan skies. But this one involves the U.S. military. A U.S. Air Force KC-135 inbound from Elmendorf Air Base in Anchorage to Isleson Air Force Base southeast of Fairbanks reports a chilling UFO-related incident at 20,000 feet. The pilot reports that the object is strikingly similar to the UFO reported by the JAL flight, a massive, disc-shaped, noiseless object larger than an aircraft carrier. Seconds later, Anchorage Air Traffic Control asks if the KC-135 still has the object in sight. The pilot replies yes and says the object is now 40 feet from his aircraft. The recent incident involving JAL Flight 1628 even comes up in their cockpit recording. Thirty minutes later, the Anchorage control tower passes along a message from the regional FAA office. Actor uh, 29, the quality assurance staff at the Anchorage Center here requests you give them a call after you land at Ileson. That is it concerning the uh, objects we're looking at? Affirmative, sir. I think pilots make especially good UFO witnesses. They know what's normal in the sky and what isn't. Uh, they've seen all different kinds of airplanes routinely. When a pilot reports a UFO, there's a better than average chance that that's what it was. January 31st, 1987, less than 24 hours after the KC-135 encounter, yet another UFO-related incident occurs in the skies above Alaska. <laughs> 